I think there's something that the modern car industry is tragically low on, and it's low weight, high engagement, fun vehicles, like my little insight here. But that's why I've come to this idyllic Worcestershire village to meet a car company called Pembleton, because this, believe it or not, is a brand new car. I say car, it's sort of a car. But what is it? This has over 200 horsepower per tonne because that there is only an 850 cc engine delivering 79 horsepower, but the car weighs less than 400 kilos. And I think this is something that we need to get back into. Skinny tires, high enjoyment, low weight, spills and thrills that don't cost very much and don't actually burn that much fuel. So that's the basis of this Late Break Show. I'm Johnny Smith, and this episode is proudly supported by blackcircles.com, Britain's largest online tyre retailer. Before we talk about this car, this is not the first Pembleton car. I say car, I've got to use inverted commas car because it's not quite a car, is it? Is it classed as a car? It, it's a car, but we, we like to call it a cycle car. Very much inspired by, by the sort of 20s and 30s styles. Yeah, but this is not the first vehicle that you made? No. No, so essentially the, the company was founded back in 99 uh, by Phil Gregory. Um, it's actually my, my dad. So he set up with a, a three-wheeler, um, all unintentional. It was never a planned, a planned business venture, so to speak. Um, and basically the story was my parents were, were planning a wedding anniversary. Yeah. Trip to, to Ireland, going cycling for a few weeks, and a couple of ciders too many. Talking out loud, they were going over the, the prices of, of ferries. <laughs> of uh, course. Yeah, as you ferries. do. Um, and, yeah, Maggie... Um, says oh motorbikes and trikes go free and that was sort of enough of a spark for the next project for phil um and yeah he, he set sort of set the the plan together and, and started this build of a, a three-wheeler yeah and essentially they did the trip had two push bikes on the back on a luggage rack oh my gosh yeah and so he, brilliantly eccentric yeah it certainly was and, and he essentially he he came back and friends and family all sort of got in touch and just the general response from the trip was just all so positive. And, and people just said to him, look, I want one, can I have one? And yeah, it basically grew from there. Wow, and the name, it's not your surname, because I thought not, it no. was you know, your, the surname of the family or something. So where the hell does the surname, where does the Pembleton name come from? When he, he built the old number one, as we call it, the first Pembleton. Um, does that still exist? It still exists, it's okay. his daily, his daily, his only car, it's his daily driver. What now? Yeah, it's still his all only year car. round, oh yeah, he uses it. <laughs> <laughs> In that time frame he had, it was about six weeks um, until they left to, from the start of the build. So he did the whole design and the, the build in that six week period of the, the first one. It's, it's had a lot of changes since, but the initial concept. Six weeks to come yeah. up with the idea, make the car, then drive it around Ireland. Yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah, it was, it was, it was quite a short period of time, but yeah, he was a bit pressed with, with getting hold of things and, and components and things. And at the time, um, a neighbor had a, a caravan called a Pemberton. And he thought, it, he basically used the, the aluminium for the bodywork. So he stripped it off, used the, the sheet metal to, to, to use on the bodywork of the car. So he tore a caravan to pieces yep. <laughs> to make the panels. And this, the, again, this model here, this is aluminium bodied, right? Yeah, aluminium bodies. Not off a caravan in Not this Not off case, a caravan. But... The one I want to talk about is this. So you've got the, the three-wheeler, uh, which is the V-Sport. And then you've got this, the T24. So four-wheeler, obviously. V-twin air-cooled, which is your, your front bumper. Yep. And behind that, you've got a gearbox 
from a Citroen, right? Okay, so inboard discs, Citroen 2CV, front wheel drive, just under 80 yep. horsepower. But the weight, it's the weight of this thing that's just daft. It's under 400 kilos. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 361 kilos. One of the key things for us was, was having a lightweight car. Uh, we thought it was really important to get that authentic feel. Um, and that, that's something that feels different to, to other options that are available out there. Yeah. Um, and you, and the, the fuel range of like over 350 miles. Yeah. But of course the engine's only a small engine. It's, it's 750 as standard and then the, the optional 850, which this particular car has. The first thing that I really marvel at from a, a packaging point of view is the fact that it's a flat floor car with loads of room in this tub. And this seat's really sort of sculpted and actually extremely squishy and comfortable, but supportive. I haven't moved around much. The Squab is CNC machine and it's, I don't know, it's just dug out in a way where I think two people could fit in here without, without it being ridiculous and not skating around and bashing into one another. Now I've got to take notice of the gear shift layout. And being a 2CV of course, the gear shift is high up here. I mean, to younger viewers, it's more akin to the Civic Type R rather than the, uh, rather than the 2CV, but you know what I mean. Because first gear, first gear is where second gear is, second gear is where third is, third's where fourth is, and fourth is where fifth is. It doesn't have five speeds, it's four speed only. Right. <laughs> and that's the thing, 50 miles an hour, your face is getting battered by the wind, the midges, the pollen. It's a slender tub. Your right arm lives outside of the car pretty much, but it's got a lovely quilted, really padded, really nicely padded actually. The whole thing, the upholstery is be beautiful. So I'm going to do a quick 0 to 62, if I can. Span the front wheels up a bit. Not just are you getting the sort of like good old fashioned old school thrills and spills, but you're doing it with a, a high degree of fuel economy as well. It doesn't really use much fuel because it's so small and so light. The sound is amazing through those, those pair of sort of like tapered shotgun pipes that run all the way down just under my arm. And they are wrapped in a heat shield, so I can actually touch them where I get in and out. And on the overrun, you get that, that, that cackle. In fact, it kind of sounds like... It sounds like Sid James laughing. Ah, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carry on films. Not that I remember them. I'm too young. <laughs> oh, God, bloody... <laughs> What makes this look really odd is the suspension, because it's fully independent. So yeah, we, we essentially went for independent suspension, so all the wheels are fully independent on swing arms, um, fully adjustable damping, so again, we can really set, set that to suit a customer's needs, whether you want a softer ride or a firmer ride. Wow. Um, but yeah, and again, with this, this system um, running right underneath the bottom of the car, it's got all this weight really low down, um, it also means it brings the overall weight of the whole car down. So the dampers are horizontal? Yep. Right, okay. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Bonnet held down by sheepskin-backed leather straps, which is yep. nice and trad. Double exhaust. Um, wire wheels, which are bolt-on on the inside. But of course, this is, this is the other thing, isn't it? It doesn't matter about how much power you've got. If you, if you sort of limit the control by grip, yep. you get that you get that old fashioned feel. 
Now, the Pembleton T24 is a bit of an oddball because it's not a normal car at all. And it has these tires, 4.50 by 18, kind of blocky, narrow tires. But if you have a more regular classic car or a brand new car, be that EV or piston, and you need new tires, head straight to the blackcircles.com website. Head to the Black Circles website, enter your vehicle registration number and your postcode, and then you'll find the most suitable tires for your car and your budget. There are thousands of reviews of different tyres from real customers to help you choose the best tyres for your car. And with the Black Circle's click and fit service, with over 2,000 tyre fitting partners, there will be a garage or a mobile tyre fitter conveniently located near you. There's two things I really want to know. One, who are the people that buy these? And two, I have never seen one for sale second hand, despite you being nearly 25 years old. So either I'm blind and stupid or nobody ever sells them. <laughs> yeah, so um, a bit of a mix really in terms of owners. Um, generally, it's UK audience. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of people who want to use them for touring, um, but also something for a lot of fun on, on a, throughout the summer and, and, and view it in more that way. Yeah. As I say, we have some customers who, who go touring every year, do big mileage. Yeah, so it, it is, it's usable and it's a very comfortable car as well on, on long journeys. Um, but then we also, we have, yeah, a complete mix of demographic. We've got, got a, a young sort of lady who's around 26 and then we've got sort of older gentlemen and couples. It's, it's really a mix. Right. Um, it's, it's quite a diverse sort of car in the way people choose to use it. Yeah, yeah. What's the chassis? What's the skeleton of this thing? So it's all custom, all made in-house. Um, so it's a tubular steel space frame chassis. Um, Phil's made every single Pendleton chassis. Um, really? Out there, yes. There's, there's about 500 Pendletons in total on the Is road. Is there really? Yeah. Everyone, he's, he's welded himself. So wow. it's quite a nice, nice sort of bit of continuity on them. So. Yeah. And I know this one's painted, um, but a lot of the ones I've seen in the sort of library pictures on your gallery are just polished alley. Yeah with that sort of spun front end and the three wheeler has the spun back end. Yeah. So is that seems to be the most popular kind of finish is bare sheet aluminium. I think the, the reason for that is essentially the work that goes into the body work. Um, we obviously we do it all in house and it's so much prep and so much work to make sure there's no dents, no imperfections, no scratches. Yeah. And we do that with the, the aluminium body work. So once you get to the end of it, um, and you know you haven't got any filler or paint to cover up, up potential mistakes. Yeah. So you end up with this this really nice, clean, clean bodywork. And I really like the the um, the mud guards. They go right down, almost to the ground, almost touching the ground. So they're quite flush with the rest of the car. But the thing I'm interested in is the storage because I mean the boring practical dad in me is thinking this sort of car's fun, but if you can't really put anything in it, it does sort of like leave a sour taste in your mouth because no one wants to go out with you. So I can see that it's got a really deep glove box, yeah. like a weirdly deep glove box. <laughs> so where's the main boot? It's in here. Yeah, basically straight behind these seats. Show, so, me, show me. But yeah, these fold me. down. So essentially if you, you're you going away or for sort of a, a weekend off stick. or, yeah, that's a little little inside hack. That's good because it's completely watertight. Yeah. It's, it's a really good space, just under 200 litres. That's you, great. You get, a, get your bags in there, enough yep. to, to get away. So it, it's one of those, it's not a car that's, that's designed to be practical as a, like a daily driver. It's not going to be used like that. Yeah. Um, but it does mean we've overlooked it and tried to make it as, as practical as it can be. Yeah, yeah. And that has the tonneau in it, so it doesn't have a roof. Yep. It just has a tonneau cover. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, keep your tonneau in there, you say your bags and bits and bobs if you want to. What's this go away. lovely Pembleton satchel? What is this? <laughs> yes, that's um, we've it's... we've got little toolkits and things that we do like that, um, all branded. So if, if customers want anything, that's like really that, neat. They've got all the gear they need. It's absolutely fascinating, and because it's got the two CV gearbox, it's got the the two CV style hockey stick <laughs> gear changer. Yeah, right up there. Yeah, and again, fully adjustable. So as with most of the things on the car, we we set them to suit the the customer's um, sort of requirements and, and make sure they're comfortable. Yeah. Um, so everything from the seats to the steering wheel to the gear lever, it's all adjustable and we'll set it, set it to suit. We'll return after these messages. <laughs> 
Of course you get all the vibration because of it being a V-twin. It shudders just like the Morgan three-wheeler um, did when it had the, the sort of Harley Davidson derived V-twin motor. You get that you get that feeling, the vibration, which is cool actually. On idle everything's shuddering, including the rear view mirror. I was I'm really intrigued to see what this car's like after after reading about it I actually I told um, I told Gordon Murray about it because I thought he might be interested in the, the power to weight you know, the brake horsepower per ton and the fact we're on slim tires old school kind of dynamics although I say old school you know this is a fully independent suspension car remember and actually although it's set up right now it is fully adjustable it's set up right now to be quite soft comfortable because most of the people who currently buy it like it to be a bit more uh, compliant not so much of a bone shaker but you can change that you've got the fly screen here which doesn't seem to do a huge amount hence why I've got sunglasses on I'm not normally a sunglasses on camera wearing person but needs must you look down you can see the top of the v-twin the sheepskin backed leather straps I'm filming this in mental health awareness week and I've, I've inadvertently I think picked a really really good week for a vehicle like this and, and the reason for that is because it's one of those cars that's as close to a sort of motorcycle as you're gonna get but you can share it with someone if you want it you don't have to wear a helmet and it just feels like you can truly escape. No hope of doing Bluetooth, you've got no roof. You're just enjoying it. You can smell everything, like you go past a farm, you can smell the manure. I don't know, it just puts you in touch with your senses and strips back motoring. It's not about loads of power and loads of speed, it's about sensation. Oh, the beating heart of the operation. This is the factory. Is this the it factory? It is, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is awesome. That was going to be one of my questions right at the start of this. How many do you build? So we do 10 cars a year. Okay. Um, but we, we build three cars at a time. So okay. just a couple, obviously, here. Um, but that helps just balance the, the sort of the, the jobs throughout the cars. So you can clearly see the, the riveted aluminium body here. And actually, what's really good now, so under the bonnet here, which is like the sort of classic kind of hinged setup, isn't it? This is where your, your wiring loom sits, and all your modern loom is sort of hidden away from prying eyes. And then this is where you can see the 2CV gearbox, yet to be mated to the, to the engine. But yeah, you do forget how cool that setup is with the, the inboard disc. So, is that, so this has standard kind of 2CV brakes? Uh, so it's standard braking, so again, it's, it's really powerful disc brakes, um, but again, the weight of the car means you've got really strong performance on the braking. Yeah, yeah. Um, using little wheelwood calipers at the rear. Okay. Yeah. And you make all the suspension yourself, so it's your own design, this is not borrowed off another car? No, no so very much mm. a huge, sort of vast majority of the car is, is, is bespoke and, and in many cases made by us. So as we said earlier, all the, all the chassis, um, that's all all made in house, um, but also all the suspension, so the arms, all of the, the spring, the damper, it's all bespoke. Um, so we, we try and do it all in house when we can, or as That's much as we can. And a, and a rack of steering wheels around the back there. Yeah, which is something we, we do do our own steering wheels. So 
you can actually see the sort of various stages. So we have the sort of the initial stage, we have the logos added. This one's actually where the, the wooden rim gets added. Um, okay. So there's a, a chap who lives in the village. Um, and we, yeah, we wander down with a handful of steering wheels, take them to him, he spins up the, the rims, um, fits them, and then they go off um, to another local company who, who fit the leather. So the man in the village makes the rims of the steering wheel? Yeah. Yeah, just so. just an old guy with a yeah, with it's quite a, a quirky little sort of <laughs> setup. Really, it's quite nice. That's brilliant. Yeah, it, yeah. You don't want to make thousands of these a year, clearly. No, no. It's it's really important for us that it, it stays low low quantities. Um, it's all about that customer experience, being involved in the process. Yeah, we always encourage and welcome customers to come see the car during the build and see how it goes together. And yeah, and it, I think from that it creates that that bit more of a special bond. Um, but yeah, certainly going forwards, we, we, we're upping numbers slightly, but nothing, nothing major because we, right. we want to stay true to all the things that we feel are important. So this is one of the three wheelers, yep. the V Sport, but same same drivetrain options as the as the four wheeler. Yep, and similar construction by the look look of it. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell viewers where the engine comes from. The engine at the front, the, the lovely air cooled V twin here. It's actually um, it's a Moto Guzzi engine, so a motorcycle shaft drive motorcycle engine, and that's what's mated to the to the gearbox. So they they're brand new. The gearbox is a re rebuilt core unit, right? Yep, and we have our own bespoke internals as well as options on those. Oh right, so you can have different ratios. Yeah, stuff. we do our own gears. Yeah. Race clutch. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't gone that far yet, but yeah. Well, I suppose it doesn't have much weight to haul, does no. it really? So that that's the joy of these yep. things. Ah. We've walked in, I've just noticed what this is. <laughs> so we've walked in a normal door, but there aren't any car sized doors at either end of the workshop. So this is where the car gets pushed is, out. Yeah. yeah. So, so it gets pushed in on that side. It doesn't even get pushed in on that side. It gets, because we start obviously start oh, with the so chassis. It, the chassis fits through the, the right. door, yeah. So it's, yeah, we've had, a, we've had a pound for every time I was asked how you get the cars out. Yeah, it's <laughs> I've quite a bit of money. Well, now that. you know the secret viewers, it's it's this massive cat yeah. flap. <laughs> it's the future cat flaps. And you just you just you just shove it out there, yeah. and then it goes round to the next bit. That's great. I think one thing I would say is when I learned about the T24 being front wheel drive, I was worried that that would make it a bit dull, but I I actually don't think it is. I do think that the gearbox is probably the the sort of the oldest feeling component which does slow down progress a bit like the synchro feels a little bit old but but i think the engine makes up for it it's a great engine it's mad to think that when morgan were doing the three-wheeler with the v-twin it was a two-liter engine this is less than half of that and a lot lighter and the independent suspension. You really feel like although it's soft, it's got your back and the softness makes it feel old school. It makes it lean a little bit and move. And I like that. And I'm not going fast. I'm, I haven't done more than 60. <laughs> Tally ho, you lovely, lovely bastards. I've realised how much I enjoy getting out in a silly car, car, and getting the wind rushing through my male pattern baldness. <laughs> I see countryside. Oh, this is it. These are the roads. <laughs> it's the sound. The, the sound's just spot on. I'm starting to really gel with it now. If you misjudge a corner and it tightens hard, I'm not worried about the back end skipping. It just doesn't. You are moving a lot, but but it's predictable because of this suspension.
if you're watching this video and seriously considering buying a car a vehicle like this let me know in the comments i'd love to know why and what you've owned before to make you arrive at thinking that this might be a cool idea there's this real fear that car ownership and car appreciation has to be tribal if you're into veteran cars you're over there if you're into vintage you're there classics here resto mods here ev over here for example but my personal view is and the view of this channel the late break show is that this stuff can all kind of mold together and it can live in harmony and what's great about a car like the pembleton the t24 here is the fact that it does marry this idea of old pre-war glory days really early days of motoring but in a package that a lot of younger people or people who perhaps don't want the reality of a car that's over 100 years old they just want the spirit of it and i think they've captured the spirit of a car like this so wonderfully well it's well built it's exciting to drive and crucially in a world now where we get so carried away with big horsepower but heavy weight those cars are becoming more and more unusable they're almost outlawing themselves so possibly this is the future of enjoyable down-to-earth escapism motoring is it not 850 cc's over the front wheels in a car that weighs well under half a ton providing it doesn't rain i'm a big fan of it i wonder what you think let me know what you think in the comments thank you for watching this episode of the late break show i really hope you've enjoyed it if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe we review brand new cars electric cars eccentric cars car collections barn finds and my own project vehicles bye love you